For over 20 decades, Northern Uganda had put up with an infamous Lord's Resistance Army War led by warlord Joseph Kony. The war had its toll on the region, breaking down the social fiber, economic vibrance of the region and antagonizing the political setup. Subsequently, social services like health, education, roads, water and sanitation were adversely affected consequently, resulting into widespread disease breakout, moral breakdown, low levels of education and retarded economic activity respectively. Government efforts to revive the region have had challenges, but major ones in the health and education sector. The inefficiencies in the education and health sectors have majorly been caused by the rampant corruption, lack of proper accountability mechanism at both local and central government levels, as well as an equal distribution of resources. Action Aid, working together with other development partners, started community barazas to ensure public accountability. With this, Action Aid hopes that there will be effective service delivery. Our main intention and objective of these barazas was to uh, strengthen uh, and deepen the accountability uh, fora that would bring together the, the, the service providers and then the, the, the duty bearers together with the duty, uh, the right holders, to come and interact and share for the purpose of improving uh, service delivery at uh, the health sector and education sector. The idea was a presidential initiative to cause change in the different government departments and where locals were able to beat tedious bureaucratic tendencies of government officials in addressing the issue that affect the common man. Action Aid working together with other development partners, Democratic Governance Facility and others, the community barazas were started to strengthen and deepen accountability of all service stakeholders and duty barriers for improved service delivery. From each and every participant that would get up to really give in submission, the issues of accountabilities would come on the issues of head teachers not accounting for UPE and head teachers not accounting for PTA. Parents right now they have deserted, they do not want to pay PTA because uh, they do not see accountability and they feel they are giving money to be eaten. I feel our parents need more of sensitization so that they know their roles and responsibilities toward the education of their children. As a mitigating step forward, Action Aid conducted a research in Agago and Padere district, specifically in the education and health sector, and the results were shocking. In Agago district, issues from the health sector included malaria outbreak, overwhelming number of patients at health facilities, as well as understaffing. Health facilities like Geregere don't have power at the health facility and this greatly affected the health sector since the anti-malarial drugs are no longer with the village health teams which has made the system fail to function. It was also established further that the health workers at Geregere Health Facility demanded and received Ugandan shillings 50,000 from mothers who go to deliver. These, among other allegations like the charge of 5,000 shillings per mother for lighting, among others, have hampered the health service delivery. The education sector is not any different, as huge numbers of school-going aid children being kept in the communities. A survey conducted in four sub-counties where several schools were visited List six government paid teachers, however, they cannot support teaching effectively. It's also important because to me, I know we moved to school for inspections, and uh, every time we move twice, at least the funding that we have can allow us to reach a school.
twice or do our inspection twice in a town. But if, if we, there was enough resources, we were supposed to move to schools three times in a term. But because of the mega resources that always sent from the ministry, it allowed us to move twice in a term. So the issue of saying that uh, there is a inadequate inspection of school on the ground, I do not agree with it because we have been moving, even the associate assessors, they move to do inspection in schools. The survey also established that accountability for UPE funds was a major challenge in all schools visited, with instances of head teachers borrowing funds to supplement UPE, that is to say at Okede at 120,000 shillings to be refunded to PTA. The problem is there were some that were found to be really misappropriated and the district is asking them to put back and uh, their cases have been referred to the reward and sanction committee because we have to take appropriate action before we take any action. And they appeared before the reward and sanction committee last week and we are still waiting for their results. We now want to know what the committee will come out and uh, the result they come out we shall present it to Kao again, then Kao will make it on whether to forward them to uh, the district service for demotion or to give them another last warning, that now depends on the cow. But we have done our part. What I want to say is that whenever any complaint comes to us about uh, this misappropriation of funds, for us we are, what we do here is to send auditors there to prove, because for us, we don't have the mandate to begin punishing somebody. Okay, the primary school has two head teachers with a ghost. Oyo Alphonse is the one on payroll, but the current head teacher is not on payroll. Other irregularities, like at Okede Primary School, where 7 million shillings had accumulated, but the DEO instructed the school only to be withdrawing current releases only. Efforts by the community to have the DEO investigated on the cases of Okede and Oyere schools are still futile. Not embezzling like directly. Uh, some of them have developed a trick where they borrow this money. When they borrow, they fail to pay back. And that is the, the trick most of them are using. They borrow the UPE money, but it's in form of a loan. You know, you borrow your own, like you're borrowing your own money with it from your own school stealing in a different form and you fail to account and uh, many times they try to, to, to follow it up. Other times, I think like you have had the DO say, sometimes they just transfer these people. And uh, I, I think here we need a bit of combined effort together with the school management committee, with other stakeholders at the district to make sure that they follow these teachers up to the end so that they are able to account for these monies. I have not sealed any teacher and those who have been having problems I have dealt with them so I am not behind the teachers I, I, only, I am only behind those who are doing the right work but if you are not doing the right thing I'll be with you. The schools visited were found to have inadequate classrooms such as a Bill Nino primary school which puts the lives of learners at great risk as pupils study under tree. Yeah, with regards to this school, I've been nearly, my appeal to the high authority is that now at the moment the, the most important thing we need is sanitation because without sanitation, without the toilet, we are not able to continue anymore. And others, other things we can talk about is uh, the furniture, like this for, for pupils, so that pupils can sit on them and use them properly. Even textbooks are not enough. Even teachers are not enough. Because you can imagine seven teachers on the government payroll and uh, 632 pupils, just like that. So my appeal to the government is if they can maybe help this school. And that's why if you go to our schools, you'll find there are some
five, others six, and that's why we are calling upon the parents to begin contributing and pay some PTA teachers. Definitely, for teachers, we have very few. We, I think we have the, 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 the lowest number of teachers. And these ones, I report even to the ministry, even to our MPs to help us so that they, they get this thing. The RDC also collected data that has always sent to, to the ministry, yearly, for the ministry to act, but they cannot lift our what? ceiling. It was the ceiling given to us in 20, uh, around 28. And after now, it has not been uplifted. So, shortage of teachers is a big problem. Parents themselves, if you look at, like in the school, they are not responsible. You find that children are sent to school, they, start, they have eight subjects, but children are given only one book. And sometimes even they divide this book into two. Inadequate latrines and girls' changing rooms is exposing pupils to sanitation-related illnesses, especially in Abil Nino Primary School, where pupils use the nearby bush. If you look at that side, you don't have to learn now at the school. The school was supposed to be closed at the beginning of this term. But the, 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 the preparation for the toilet is still ongoing. There is a pet latrine dug there, jazzy with the, the, the tape, but it is not constructed up and now. So we still have that problem of sanitation. The people just go to bush to ease themselves up to now. That is the situation we are in now. Other inefficiencies like lack of adequate facilities and the teacher-pupil ratio have affected the sector further. But in terms of furniture, P1 to P3, they sit on the floor, but no desk, no table, even for teachers, no chairs, no tables. With such inefficiencies publicly noticed, government and other supporting partners like Action Aid, Democratic Government Facility and others hope that the community barazas will bring the persons in charge to account as well as involving the communities to cause change in the day-to-day -day running of the local government. We are happy that the district stakeholders, both in Agago and Pade, they have been very supportive to us in this process. And, and, and I think this is uh, one way that I think as Action Aid, uh, we have done quite so well in bringing the duty bearers, the service providers and the right holders to hold their leaders accountable and also for them to be held accountable because it is vice versa. It is not only the service providers and the, the duty bearers. Mm -hmm.